Hello, I am Pam Ford, co-hosting today. We are here at the Joliet Area Historical Museum, where Seven Mountains presents the Black History Joliet Celebration, along with Be Informed, Julia Alexander, Community Television. Today, we have with us Sherry Williams that I will have the honor of interviewing. Sherry Williams is a person that people have stood on the shoulders with, and she'll explain to you why we feel that way. I feel that way. So many other union members feel that way. Um, but we just wanted to share a little bit of your story, bits and pieces, for you to share with the Joliet community some of the things that you've done. And this is Black History Month, and we are celebrating you. So Sherry, can you just share with, um, with the Will County community uh, who you are, what you've done for a living, and how you've impacted what you've done. Thank you, Tammy. Well, I am a lifelong Will County resident, grew up in Lockport Township in the Fairmont area. Um, as you said, my passion is my union, and I am a retiree from the Will County Sheriff's Department. I was union president, first African American, and first woman union president that they had. I was the union president for 12 consecutive years, and I held many other offices as well after that. But um, as the new president, um, I did just about everything. We negotiated contracts. We made sure that people's rights weren't violated. And we basically just grew the organization. And when I started, it was like 150 members. When I left, it was like 1,000. So, mm. so we managed to get some people convinced that the union was the way to go. And as a union um, activist, if you will, I learned that, you know, <laughs> There are so many things that people can do that they don't realize they can do. Mm -hmm. I say you don't know your own strength mm. until you test it. So I, I like to think that I was instrumental in getting a lot of um, the other females in the local engaged and involved in the local union. And we, we made some pretty, pretty good strides. I've also done a few other things since then. So now that I'm retired, I have uh, plenty of time and I've, I've been able to get more involved in the community than I previously was. So I'm doing that now as well. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Sherry. How many union members did you have in your local? Well, like I said, we, um, by the time I left, we had about a thousand members. So it's a, uh, and we represent all the county employees from the Sunny Hill Nursing Home to the Will County Division of Transportation. I worked at the Sheriff's Department. So we had quite a few, you know, people, the whole county employees, if you will. So it's about a thousand of us. And do you still help them today, even though you're no longer there? Yes. Um, as a matter of fact, sometimes I think I'm still there. So um, yeah. <laughs> people do call me all the time for mm -hmm. advice. And I you know, want to see the locals succeed. All the hard work that I did, I hate to see it go by the wayside. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I still get calls all the time. And I'm active in my retiree chapter. So I'm on the executive board for the um, subchapter 73 and actually retiree. So. Wonderful. Still at it. Good. That, but that's what it's all about. That is what it's that's all about. That's what it's all about. Now, um, when we think about Will County, and particularly Joliet, Lockport, the, uh, what are some of the other organizations that you are affiliated with now? Well, um, I became uh, affiliated with, as a matter of fact, one of the founding members of the Will County Democratic Black Caucus. And we are, um, of course, an offshoot and affiliation with the Will County um, Democratic Central Committee. And we are one of, the, one of the caucuses that they do have. And I'm glad to say that, you know, we are, saw a need for, I, I, like Michelle Stiff, our chair, always says, you go to these um, events, these Democratic events, and one or two African Americans, and that's about all you see at the at the fundraisers or whatever. So with the caucus, we're trying to get more of the African American community engaged in the political process because politics is so very important. I mean, it's everything is politics. Everything is politics. Everything. So we. We do, we um, trying to make sure that if candidates are running, that their, their name is out there, that people know who they are so that you know who to vote for. And just getting people engaged in the political process. You know, um, voting rights are being really, really tampered with in this country. So luckily in Illinois, you know, we are, we're a blue state. Yes. So we don't have to worry about it as much. But little things go on here in, in the county as well. So we want to make sure that voting rights are uh, just exercise and that they're protected. Wonderful. Now, you all have a 
you'll be down here in the next week or two. And what's the significance of being down here the next week or two for well, the we're, we're part of the um, celebration of Black History in Joliet, and we are the Will County um, Historical Black Hist uh, Black History Organization, and we're trying to get a museum, a Black History Will County Black History Museum here in Joliet, wow. the old Cassidy House on um, Jackson Street. That is hopefully going to be the home of the Will County Black History mm -hmm. Museum. Mm -hmm. So we've been um, we we're having our launch here, mm -hmm. and um, to launch a fundraiser, and we're hoping that we can get the word out that this organization exists, and hoping we can get some community participation and involvement. And there's a lot of history in Joliet that you don't realize that the contributions that the uh, black people made here in our county. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to make sure that that's hi highlighted and like I said, we're trying to get that off the ground. So that's what we'll be doing here. So what date, the time, and then what is the amount that you're asking? The, um, we're going to be here on the 18th, which is that Friday, and from 5 to 6.30 p.m. And we're This asking, month? Yeah, for, for Black History Celebration. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're going to be here February 18th, and we'll be here from 5 to 6.30 p.m. And again, we'll, um, we're asking for donations of $25, so that'd be part of our fundraising efforts. And of course, if you want to get more, we'll take that too. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but yeah, so we're hoping to get the word out, like I say, we, that we're here. We do exist, and mm -hmm. hopefully if anybody has any artifacts or anything mm -hmm. that, you know, from the black community that they would like to share, we, we are looking for any kind of donations of that sort as well. Wonderful. That is wonderful. The, um, now, one of the organizations that we are in together is Speak Up and Vote. Yeah. And uh, we we'll speak up and vote. And there's one person that's not here because we didn't plan this right. interview. It was right. spontaneous. Right. Uh, <laughs> Julie, Julie <laughs> got us to do this spontaneous interview. But our other partner, Trista Brown, is not here. But she's our other partner. Uh, and so it's the three of us that pretty much, you know, just do the work with Speak Up and Vote. Um, but when I brought this concept of Speak Up and Vote to you all, the whole goal behind it was we needed to get more people engaged in the process. Right. Trista introduced me to you. Right. And so with that, we got out there and we humped. We did over 25 voter registrations in the last, what was it for that, well, oh, man, within like a six month, yeah. a six month span. Um, so with that being said, now we're coming into another election. And one of the things that we are most proud of mm -hmm. is that our organization was able to get legislation passed for um, all of Illinois to have voter registration in the jail if they choose. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, um, like you say, we um, saw the need down at the Will County Jail, and I, I, I worked at the jail. I retired from the Sheriff's Department, and that was my last um, position that I had was working at the jail with the detainees. So one thing that, that I noticed and that I thought was be important, the detainees, um, at, at, when you're incarcerated, you don't get to do too much of anything. So to me, they, they can feel very much uh, dehumanized. Mm -hmm. So one way to feel part of your community is be engaged in the voting process. Mm -hmm. So when we decided that we were going to do that, and we said, well, let's go register the detainees to vote, mm -hmm. didn't get to do as much of that as we wanted to. Right. So then you had the idea, well, you know, Cook County has a polling place at their jail, so why can't we do that in Will County? That's right. We attempted to do that without the legislation mm -hmm. and it fell flat. Mm -hmm. So we contacted um, Senator John Connor, mm -hmm. told him what we were trying to do, and that, you know, they, they're telling us that we need legislation for this. He actually worked, um, got the bill sponsored, he sponsored the bill and got it as part of the election omnibus bill. Mm -hmm. And now we got the, it passed, the governor signed it, and we, yes, <laughs> and we are working with um, Sheriff Mike Kelly to get the polling place in the jail. We're working steadily with him and with the Will County Clerk, Warren State Ferry to get voter registration and a polling place in the jail. So hopefully by this primary election, they will be able to vote at the jail. Absolutely. That'll be a first. 
that and that I'm sorry, but that's huge. That is huge. <laughs> because it wasn't just for us. There's yes. 102 counties in, in Illinois. Yes. Cook County is mandated to have a polling place. Mm -hmm. So the rest of us 101 counties can now also have a polling yes. place in our jail. Because, because of this legislation. Yes. Yes. Right here, right here. Yep. <laughs> all right. The, um, so again, it's all about being active in the community. Yes. It's about getting engaged, voting, because if we weren't voters, then we wouldn't be able to get any of this done. Sure. You know, so that's the importance of it. Um, but like you said, because people don't, pe it's not important to people until you make it important. Exactly. And it wasn't important to any of them yeah. until we made it important to them. Yes. And so we're proud. That's, you know, that's one of our biggest accomplishments, I can say, in the last year that we've actually done. I'm pleased with that. Uh, and I, I will say too, Pam, you're right. If we were not voters, because that is actually how I know John Connor. I mean, I'm a precinct committee person. He's on the Lockport Township Democratic Organization. Mm -hmm. I know him from that, and it's all about that political process, that exactly. voting. Exactly. Exactly. And um, so, what we're looking at this year, as far as you know, some of the things is that because you know what, we're back at the election year. Yes, we are. So, would you like to share with you know with the community what you decided to do? Well, I um, have been convinced to um, and kind of persuaded to run for the Will County Board. I am an official candidate for Will County Board District 5, and I'm hoping that I'm successful this time. I've run for County Board before, so I'm hoping this time, I, and things are looking really, really good. So mm -hmm. I'm hoping that, that, that I can muddle through it and get on the board and maybe change a few things. And I think one thing that's important, even when you ran the last time, even though you had lost by a few votes, you still got busy helping the other person that won. Yes, I did. Again, connections, yes. engagement, yes. because you didn't let you, uh, you didn't let you not winning right. stop you from being active in the community. Because it wasn't just about me winning the election; it was about helping the community. So even though I wasn't helping the community as a York County Board Commissioner. I could still help the community as Sherry Williams, the activist, you know, yeah. and the unionist, and do what I do just the same. Mm -hmm. So even if I don't win this time, that's not going to stop me. I, like you said, we got legislation passed. I wasn't on the board then. Absolutely. So we managed to do that. And I think that people need to realize their own strength. Because it was just you and me deciding to do something and exactly. just went ahead and did it. And it's like, and Tris was like, well, you're just ready to go. Yeah. And then once the three of us got together, we made it happen. And that's important. Yes. yes. That's important. And, it, and it's not, it's good for us to do things in the community, hopefully, to get other people to participate. Yes. Maybe if they see us doing it, they'll, they'll do it as well. Because that's the way it works with the union. A lot of times, if I would have asked people to help me out, you know, they see that I'm out there doing it. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's easier to persuade people to get involved when that's you are right. involved. And just like Julie said, it's standing on the shoulders. So you're looking at, you know, we're all in our, you know, middle aged here. So it's got to be some new folk exactly. coming up. So the goal here really is to be able to get other people, younger people, to get on the bandwagon. And they may do things differently, and that's okay. That's fine. But at the end of the day, the goal is the same. Right. You know, right. Um, because if you're not, if you don't vote, like John Lewis say, you don't count. Exactly. And um, and when you go down there and you have to you know call someone you know down at the you know down at the city hall or whatever, if they know you voting and you can tell them who your precinct person is or what have you who your senator is, they're gonna know that, okay this is a voter. Right. You know they're gonna somebody's gonna call you back. Right. And right. if you're not one, they're gonna look that up because I, I, I they're gonna look it up and when they know that you don't vote then you don't count to them so they nothing's gonna happen. So like I said, I am proud of the work that we've been doing, Sherry, with Speak Up and Vote. And um, I'm just hoping that we'll get more people involved in the political process as far as voting, doing things, young people doing things. And I'm just pleased. So I am grateful, you know, that you're doing what you're doing. You, you're always out there in the community making things happen. And you're really a behind the scenes person. Yes, I am. You know, you're so behind the scenes person. In front of the camera stuff is just not my thing. I'm you know, but you make it happen by working behind the scenes. And because the people, if you can't work behind the scenes, you can't work in front of it. True. And at True. the end of the day, that's what it is. So, Cher, is there anything else that you can think of um, that you would like to share with the people before we end this uh, interview? Well, I just, I would just like to say too, and my mother's no longer with us, but she was instrumental in a lot of the things that I do. My mother was always 
helping somebody do something. Tell me and your mom's so name. What would you my mean? mother was Nazri Williams, and um, in the Lockport community, she's known very well. And I just thank her for put, instilling in me, because like you said, I'm a behind the scenes person, mm -hmm. so I never thought I'd be out in front doing anything. <laughs> But every time I do that, I think, you know what? I got more of my mother than that I thought I did. <laughs> so, so, and people keep telling me that as well. So I, I just, just listen to the elders, if you will. But I think that we, you know, that we can instill some wisdom in people. And young people have a lot to give, but we do too. I, I, I don't like when people say, well, let the old people go by the wayside, because I'm an old person now. And I, just, I don't think I need to go by the wayside. I still got a little bit of living in me. So, so I, I think we all should work together because we need what they have, but they need what we have as well. Absolutely. Well, again, standing on the shoulders of others, the, um, I want to thank you. Thank you, Julie, for um, putting me on the spot co-hosting this here today. But that's what we do though. You know, that's what we do because we get more accomplished when we're all in the struggle together making things happen. So thank you, Sherry, for your due diligence in your community and the work that you do and the work that you'll continue to do. And thank the people in the community that'll be watching this. You know, come on down. Um, what's, what's the actual dates, the full, the full weekend for the dates here for Seven, um, for seven Mountains? 17 through the 20th. So um, February 17th through the 20th, come on down and participate. We have so many different things going on, events happening, people singing, dancing, poetry, books, interviews, you name it, um, it's happening. So we hope to see you all down here and we'll be doing voter registration too, okay? <laughs> Thank you all so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Julia Alexander and this is Be Informed. We are here at the Joliet Area Historical Museum. I happen to have with me Elvis Madison. And Elvis Madison is the CEO and founder of what we are going to have. The, and I'll let Elvis tell you. But uh, before we get started, uh, Black History Joliet Celebration 2020 with Seven Mountains Be Informed after the peanut, Joliet Historical uh, museum right here in Elvis yes. as well right here downtown Joliet so let's talk with Elvis and find out a little bit more about the wonderful African-American Museum Wow come on Elvis tell us about that I'm so excited about it I am the chairperson of the Will County Black History Organization which is an organization uh, founded uh, solely for the purpose of building the Will County Black, the first, the only Will County Black History Museum. Wow. Uh, right now we are um, we're in the uh, founding stages of it. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with where Thornton's is on Collins Street right now. The Cassidy House is built in the 1850s was moved from that corner uh, a, a block east to Jackson Street. Wow. And that building was gifted to the black community for the sole purpose of a Will County Black History Museum. All right. And so that's what we're um, formed for. Um, that's what we're um, working at. That's why we're here this weekend okay. to push who we are, to launch who we are, to let the community know that we're here and we're going to build this museum. Okay, so, and it's in the makings right now. Yes. So when do you foresee this museum opening up? What's your deadline? So we don't have a deadline. We're, we're hoping to see in two years something okay. um, finished. Um, we're going to need your help. We're going to need the community's help. We're going to need your volunteer support. We're going to need funds. We're going to need because this is a work. This is a task. But I do believe if we come together as a community, not just the black community, white community, brown community, we can make this happen Absolutely. for our community. Absolutely. And so, look into the camera once again. You know what? This is this is really all about us and our history here and preserving our history here, yes. which is phenomenal. Uh, so, look into the camera again and tell them we need your help. We need your finances. Yes. We need your support we need your body go ahead I think yes. I told them all that. right <laughs> we definitely do need your support um, you can find find us on Facebook Will County Black History Organization um, you can find more information about how you can volunteer and the, when the weather warms up we'll be more uh, we'll be in the building again cleaning out gutting it doing everything this is a grassroots organization we definitely need your help um, to make this happen we will need funds 
streets. There's no hiding that. Absolutely. We will need money to make this happen, and with your help and support, we can we can do this. Once again, tell them who you are and how can they contact you. My name is Elvis Madison. You can contact me. I'm the um, chairperson of the Will County Black History Organization. You can find us on Facebook, Will County Black History Organization, or you can find us on Black Will County Joe, Will County History uh, at gmail.com. Okay, and so we're down here at the Joliet Historical Museum, yeah. and you have a night down here as well, do you? Yes, we had our night was tonight. We actually had our night tonight where we were uh, teaming up with Ellis Wright and his quartet. We had a great time. I enjoyed myself. We're still here now with the art exhibit going on. Um, Seven Mountains put on a great weekend. It's not too late. You can come. Uh, support is uh, definitely not too late to come down this weekend. Absolutely. Seven Mountains. That's Miss Ticey Bell in the community doing the work uh, for you. So thank you, Elvis. Thank you. And God bless you. Thank you. Okay, bye. -bye. Hi, hi. And I am back. We are interviewing a series of, of wonderful artists, and I happen to be with one on today. Her name is Donna Shannon Adams. And how can I forget Adams because that's my mother's maiden name. And so we're, we, her work is phenomenal, you guys. And um, I'm going to let Donna Shannon Adams tell you a little bit about how she got started. How did you get started, Donna? I started working with Clay back in the late 70s. I went to Chicago State and I took several classes in ceramics. I was throwing. Okay. I left school, went to work as a Chicago police officer, raised three children, and when I retired, I needed something to do besides genealogy, mm -hmm. which I did. Mm -hmm. So I started working with Clay about, I don't know, maybe five years ago. Mm -hmm. I hand build, I do mixed media, so I put fabric and beads and clay and wire. And most of my work is Afrocentric. Okay. Um, and it is a tribute to my ancestors. Wow. So, I, okay, working with the clay, I know that that has to be uh, relieving to a, to, a, to a sense, you know, the touch and yes. the feel. And tell me a little bit about that. I mean, I've seen it and I'm like, oh, I, I'd like to play in this mud. <laughs> and that's what it is. Yeah. That's, uh -huh. that's what it is. It, it's plain in mud, plain in earth. Yeah. And that's why my business is called Rooted in Clay. Wow. So, it's it's down yeah. into the earth yeah and yeah you get there's no way that you can't be messy yeah get your hands in it mm -hmm. and yeah. then yeah. it starts to flow from inside yeah. and start yeah. making something right new. let me ask you this Donna what does it take when you want to shape and mold different figures you know what does it the, the mind has to <laughs> Sometimes the mind goes really crazy. I know, right? Yes. <laughs> and, um, and, and, you know, you may think of something, or I may think of something mm -hmm. that sounds really cool, mm -hmm. and I, I want to make it, and the clay says no. Okay. The clay has a mind of its own. You can shape it, and you can, you can try to get yeah. it to do what you want it mm -hmm. to do. But a lot of times, it won't. Wow. You have to respect the clay. Wow, wow. Um, and so, and, and, and I do. I've, I've done some really complicated pieces mm -hmm. that I didn't think would survive mm -hmm. the firing, mm -hmm. and they did. Okay, so, now you spoke, Donna, about the, the clay, the beads, the wiring, the material. How do you incorporate all of that in there? When I do a first a piece, mm -hmm. uh, I make it, I dry it. I dry it for several days. Then I put it in the kiln to fire, mm -hmm. and it takes 12 hours to fire. The first firing, mm -hmm. take it out, glaze it, mm -hmm. goes back in for another 12 hours. Mm -hmm. Then when it comes out now, that's when I add the fabric and the beads and the wire, and I look and see exactly what I want to do with it. And that actually lasts me for several days because I'm always... Mm -hmm. Picking this fabric, yeah. picking that fabric. Right. This bead, that right, bead. Right. Does this look right here? Yeah. So it becomes a process. So one item can actually take me a month to complete because it's not faultless. 
it requires a lot of thought. Yeah, well, you have an awesome piece Thank in there. You. And uh, we are here at the Black Historical Joliet Celebration, Black History Joliet Celebration, yes. right here at the Area Museum in Joliet, yes. Illinois. And you are from? Chicago, you South are Side. From, you yes. are from the South Side of Chicago. South so we welcome you here. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> this is an honor. And if someone wanted to purchase some of your work or, or view some of your work, give them um, a contact. Or, I do. Okay. Have, I do have a contact. Okay. I have a business card mm -hmm. right here. Okay. And I have a website. Okay. And let me make sure I can read the website. <laughs> I don't have my glasses on. Okay. So it's uh, rooted in clay. DMS, myshopify.com. Okay. So you can find me on Facebook, okay. Rooted in Clay DMS, it stands for Donna Marie Shannon, mm -hmm. or find me on Instagram at Rooted in Clay DMS. Rooted in Clay. Rooted in Clay. DMS. Yes, ma'am. Donna, Donna Marie Shannon Adams. And you heard that. She's an awesome artist. Uh, you guys, you see some of her work because I have it posted right now. And uh, you can reach out to her and find out about all the other wonderful pieces that Donna has. Uh, now, w what's your stock like? Do you have a, do you keep a big uh, no, stock? No, okay. no, All of my work is usually one of a kind. Okay, all right. So, so do no, you there's do no big stock. Oh. And no, I don't normally do commissions. Yeah. If someone asks and they, it's, I'll consider it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But okay. I let my spirit yeah. move. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, yes. so you heard it from Donna. Yes. She is so lively. I love her. <laughs> so Donna, you know what? God bless you, God and I look forward you. to meeting you and seeing you again. I look forward to it. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless God you. Bless. And hi, I am Julia ba Julia Alexander, and I am back with Michael. Knight. Michael Knight is one of the artists here at the uh, Seven Mountains uh, Black History Joliet Celebration on tonight. Let's talk with Mike. I've seen some of his work in there. Let's talk with Mike and find out a little bit about him. Hi, Michael. How are you? How you doing? Um, my name is Michael Knight. I'm a visual artist, a military veteran. Wow. Um, I've been an artist all my life, and um, I got an opportunity to showcase downtown at uh, an event, and um, ever since then, it's been up. There. Absolutely, absolutely. So this piece of art um, that you have in there, do you have one piece or you have more pieces? Um, I have one piece. It's called His Piece, okay. Her Piece. Okay. And it's a beautiful oil painting of a nuclear black couple. Oh, wow. So tell me, what inspired you to do that piece? Um, I think it's important to um, acknowledge the black man and the black woman in the household. Mm -hmm. And um, it's getting different now, but I wanted to pay homage to that. Okay, so, awesome. Yeah, that's, so that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So tell me, Michael, I know that being an artist, you know, you have to have the mind free. Am I not correct about that? Or tell me, what does it release from you, release from you to be an artist, to sit and paint that? <laughs> Is it hand painted? It's hand painted. It's on canvas? It's on a wood panel. Okay. Um, it's four foot by four foot. It's wow. huge. But what, um, when you talk about the mind of an artist, yes. it's so peculiar you you really can't <laughs> I know you can't really pinpoint I know, it so I know. that's the beauty in it though yeah. because that's what makes the creativity and art rare absolutely so if someone wanted to purchase some of your work where can they find you is there a number or a contact for them yes I have two platforms my Instagram is Michael Knight M-I-C-H-E-A-L K-N-I-G-H-T and my Facebook is Michael Knight as well you can find me on those two platforms the man in black the man in black you've heard it from the man in black awesome painting michael thank and you. um i look forward to seeing more of your work thank you so much and so god bless you thank you so much you're I welcome appreciate it. and i am back we i am interviewing a series of artists right here at the joliet area historical museum with the celebration that's put on by Seven Mountains. Ms. Ticey Bell is the CEO of the Seven Mountains. Okay, so we have another artist with us and uh, she's just phenomenal. I'm gonna let her tell you her name and we're gonna talk about her artwork, her pieces that she's displaying on today. Hi there, Joyce. Hello, hey Julia. Okay. My name is Christine Liz LaRue. 
Most folks know me as Liz. Okay. And uh, I'm on Facebook as Liz LaRue and also a LaRue's Hand and Clay. Oh, wow. And I'm also on in Instagram as Liz.LaRue7. Okay, Liz.LaRue7. <laughs> okay, we got that. So, so um, my work is the ceramic sculpture mm -hmm. in there that's mm -hmm. called Itzel. And it's a sculpture of an Afro-Mayan Olmec woman wow. who has her hands behind her and she's in chains. And there on, on the chains are crosses, and the crosses are rose gold dotted throughout her. And there's a lock on the back where her hands are behind her back okay. like this. Mm -hmm. And it references the Dum Derbisa that was issued in 1452 mm -hmm. by the Vatican that said that all Saracens should be enslaved in perpetuity and in life. And that gave the Spanish and the Portuguese carte blanche to go into Africa, get as many slaves as possible to open up the new world. Mm -hmm. And the gold that they found, gold and silver and iron, were to be given to the Vatican in order to build the kingdom of God. Wow. Wow, that is so deep. I, so, thank you. So what we have is a religious document yeah. that's propaganda that got the whole thing started. Wow. And the thing is, in perpetuity means that Africans and Native Americans, even in death, were to be enslaved for the kingdom of God. Wow. Oh my God, she's sending chills through my body <laughs> just with what that painting means. Yeah. So what inspired you to present this particular piece? Um, I have two ancestors who are from Cuba and Suriname. Mm -hmm. And you really hear about Suriname in South America. Mm -hmm. But one of my, uh, one leg of my family only speaks Dutch. And I've never known any other African Americans except those who live in Minnesota who speak Dutch. Mm -hmm. And then my family down in Louisiana, where the family originally originates from here in the States, they speak Creole, which is a patois of French, Spanish, and Native American tongue. Can you speak any other language? Yeah, I speak un poquito espanol. Uh, I used it as a community social worker specializing in multiculturalism. Mm -hmm. And so I ran across a lot of families who are bicultural, tricultural, and our faces are brown, but we come from different cultures. So in finding out that I had ancestors who were uh, Latin American, um, I decided to go into that for my career. Wow. And so ceramics was my way of decompression. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> you know, and so, have a rough day at work, stick your hands in clay. I, I know, right? Enjoy yourself. <laughs> I know, it's almost like me making my mud pies exactly. in the style. Yeah, and that's exactly how I got started. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so, absolutely. You know. And so when, when, you're, when you're engrossed in, in making this or putting this together, mm -hmm. what are you feeling? I'm feeling that so many African Americans and Latino Americans, we do not know our history. We do not know that when we were enslaved in America, they took out parts of the Bible so that we would not be inspired and thus go into rebellion. So they took out the story of Moses. Um, I have relatives who were the three one of the three slaves that led the Mormons from Illinois to Salt Lake City, Utah. But yet, he was not allowed to become a Mormon. Wow. So, so religion has some thorny parts to it. So when I'm working in a lot of my work that is kind of grounded in Olmec and Mayan uh, and African mask, you can see the, the ties that are there. And since they have found that Africans traded with the Native Americans in South America and Mexico before the Norsemen and before the conquistadors, it's like this is just stuff that I hasn't know, right? been happened. <laughs> I know, right? So uh, your art piece. Now, did you have one piece in there? One piece have? is the little ceramic statue yes. about this tall. Uh -huh. Her name is Itzel. Okay. And that's a Mayan name meaning power of jaguar and of midwifery. Oh, 
Okay. And so she's got the chains wrapped around her with the crosses hanging on her. Okay. And uh, it's just a lot of sculptors will say that when they start on a piece, sometimes the piece you have an idea in your head of what you want to do, mm -hmm. but then there's sometimes the piece speaks to you, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it starts to go in another, yep, another it way. it starts to form its own identity, right? right, <laughs> right and right. you're just following along, exactly, right? Exactly. Absolutely, but whatever it is, whatever it forms its own identity, and when you're done with it, it come out, it is a masterpiece. Wow. So uh, my hat we goes try. off to you we all. I, I think your piece is wonderful. I've captured the pieces in mm -hmm, there, so mm -hmm. I'll display this piece as yeah. we speak. Yeah. But if anyone wanted to see more of your work or either purchase your pieces, tell them where they can contact you. Um, they can contact me on Facebook at Liz LaRue mm -hmm. or LaRue's Hand in Clay or uh, on Instagram at Liz.LaRue7 on Instagram. Okay. All right. Awesome. Well, Liz, I just think you're phenomenal. You are a walking history book yourself. You can teach us so much. And I look forward to interviewing with you again. Okay. Or not just, in, not really an interview, uh, a class. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, so that you can teach Zoom. us. Zoom. I'm Zoom class. This yeah. is phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, yeah. what, you're, what you're telling me. This yeah. Well, my, my background is in Latin American studies, and okay. that's what I went to college okay. for. Okay. So Latin American studies. Latin American studies. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So you've heard her. You know what? If you, want, if you just want knowledge, uh, call her. If you want to get a piece of this wonderful, wonderful sculpturing that she does, give her a call. God bless you. All right. And thank you for being thank on you VF so much. Thank you. And we are here now with Minister Larry Crawford has a phenomenal piece of history in there. And it is big too. And we're going to talk with Mr. Um, with Larry and we're going to find out what inspired him to put all of that history in one big package. Hello, Larry. How are you? I am well. All right. Thank, thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So let's talk about, we are here at the Black History Joliet Celebration yes. uh, with Seven Mountains after the mm -hmm. being formed with Julia Alexander, Joliet Area Historical Museum, and many others. And so yeah. tell me, what inspired you to put that piece together? Um, gosh, that's a hard question because really I was just saving clippings, as it may be, from a, a newspaper. I'm from Oklahoma, okay. and the newspaper in our, in our area was called the Oklahoma Eagle. And it was a, it was a black-owned publication, and, and it was always presenting items, and uh, whether they were cartoonish or so just illustrations that depicted uh, some of the challenges in the community and some of the progresses that we were wanting to make. Oh, wow. So that was, that, uh, and they were just clippings at first, then I had an opportunity to transfer them into a, a, a collage format. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and each one of them tells a story of mm -hmm. war, what we've walked through and yeah. as so much as where we're at right now. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And so let's talk a little bit about uh, how you put the collages together. Is there a certain pattern that you use or you just... You know, to follow like a storyline? Well, the idea was more um, the general theme of, of, the, of the piece. And it was called Let's Unite. And so it looked at some of the things that would solidify us as a community, even as a culture. Mm -hmm. And then it also looked at some things that we had to be aware of that may be destructive or prohibiting us from becoming what we had the potential to okay. become. So Absolutely. it just kind of covered the spectrum in, in all of those ways. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, do you have other pieces that you've done? As you know, as well as that one. I do. That happens to be my very favorite piece <laughs> because it has all of all of what we've described. Yes. It has the uh -huh. educational component. Mm -hmm. It has a historical component, mm -hmm. and and and, and, it, and it talks about business. It talks about voting, uh, and I guess the other part of that is that it's still very relevant. I, I think it's a sad. But at the same time, very I'm very glad about it Absolutely. because of the educational uh, that it reminds us of. But it also shows that we've not really come 
as far as I would hope we had come. Yeah. And that piece is 40 years old. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. You got to be kidding. It's 40 years old. <laughs> it is 40 years yeah, old. Yeah, it's older oh, than man. you. Oh, man. Well, you know, it may cost something. Yeah, well, yeah of course yeah. it is older than me, but we Absolutely. won't talk about that. We're not talking about but that. But yeah, that's a collector's item. Oh, um, oh, oh, oh it is. And the collect collector has it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, yeah. Uh, are you looking forward to doing more in, um, are you, would you sell that piece or? Probably not. not. I think that uh, it's a conversation piece okay. in terms of what it is. Actually, it's, it's on the wall at, uh, at my house. Mm -hmm. But in, in terms of uh, using it as an educational tool, uh, it would be my pleasure to, to talk about the historical uh, uh, scope of that when you start talking about something uh, that's as old as 1975, 76, coming up to 2022, and some of those things that maybe we've uh, made some significant progress in, and some things that we still need to focus on that are going to be essential to becoming who God has designed right. us to be. All right, well, since you're not planning on selling this, but I think it's a piece that, that should be shown to the public, because this, it really is awesome. Uh, do you ever plan on displaying it again anywhere? Well, like I've, that including you? Well, the thing that I would, I would want to do, do with it, like I say, a conversation piece, it would also be a good uh, workshop piece. Okay. <clears throat> Okay. When you start talking about empowering and, and educating mm -hmm. a, a community or a culture, and not when I say a culture, mm -hmm. I mean I, I speak in terms of humanity because mm -hmm. I think uh, I'm not just exclusively trying to uh, <clears throat> educate black people, mm -hmm. but any people, any people, because they can look at that. Yeah and make some determinations. Yeah. Well, it has, de it has been determined <coughs> in this year, 2022, that everyone needs to be educated on their history. <laughs> so, well, in this time and era, you know, education is good for everyone, and we all need to learn uh, about our history. So once again, I think it's a phenomenal piece. I love it. It is so mind-blowing. You have so many different stories in that one big painting. Uh, uh, so many years uh, of uh, history and, and stories in that one uh, painting. So once again, thank you, Larry Crawford, for sharing your art with us on today. And I know that people just, I, I know that they looked at that and it, they walked away with something on their mind. That's the kind of art it is. <laughs> and that's why I call it a, a conversation piece. Yeah. Because there, it, it kind of walks you around the page and, and it can walk you um, through time yeah. as it may be. And so in terms of workshops and those kinds of things, it would be fun or, or I think it would be very useful mm -hmm. to be able to sit around and ask for perspectives in terms of what did you see, what stood out for you, Absolutely. and where does that fit into uh, the scheme of things in terms of uh, whether we're talking about reparations, whether we're talking about uh, uh, building foundations, whether we're talking about education, whether we're talking about building businesses, all of those things are, are, are talked about or at least uh, demonstrated in that collage. Absolutely. And it's just a, it's just a, a complete picture. Absolutely. And so yeah, that's, that's the reason why it's something that I'm very passionate about in terms of uh, what my avocation is. Mm -hmm. And then so it's to be a valuable tool as I continue to hopefully have a meaningful uh, input in our community. Absolutely. Once again, so thank you so very much. Mm -hmm. Larry Crawford, you guys. It's a phenomenal mm -hmm. piece. Uh, it's and called Let's Unite. Oh, it's called Let's Unite. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Thank you once again for doing it. Okay, God Julia, bless you. Julia Alexander, God bless you. I am so happy today because I was able to realize who I had around me and these two brothers on my right, with one more coming, decided to share some very important news about their experiences. There's going to be a panel today entitled From Incarceration to Liberation, where it's going to be some serious, uh, what I would say, life experiences that's going to be shared. On my right is Jermaine, I call him Little Bill. On my left is Marlana Modibo. And uh, they might give you a tidbit of where they're at, but I just want to thank them because you know what? 
Too many times, brothers that go through these experiences don't turn their life around. If they do, they don't want to share. And so, uh, little Bill, can you just maybe just uh, say hi to Julia, if nothing else, and then whatever comes after that? Uh, hello, Julia. Uh, thank you for the invitation. My name is uh, Jermaine Ammons, and but basically just what he said. I mean, it's important for me to be able to tell my story because, like, when I came home, I was looking for a lot of examples to follow, and I needed the good guys. Yeah. You know, I needed them to show me that blueprint. So just the same as I got it from them, now it's my job to pass it to the next man or woman, you know, that's coming home in the same situation. So, you know, each one teach one. So I'm always about that. All right. On my left, I have uh, Marlana Modibu Yusi. Brilliant brother. And with Joey coming in as well. Joliet's own right here. These two brothers and myself, Joliet Central Products. But Marlana Modibu is a brother that was a political prisoner at one time, ex-member of the Black Panther Party. In fact, Unbeknownst to most people, I met him when I was a political prisoner. Lord have mercy. I know they didn't know that, but this brother right here enlightened me. He enlightened me to the core. And right now, he's going to share some things, and the rest will come out in the panel. Oh, Debo. How you doing, Julia? Uh, yes, uh, as Brother Bobby Tooney said, uh, my name is Milana Modibo Eusi. Everybody know me, by, call me by my middle name, Modibo. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm elated, I'm ecstatic the fact that he invited, he felt that I was so deserving, you know, to come here and participate in this particular program. And I got a few things I want to share with the brothers and the sisters. And like the brother said, it's all about each one, teach, each one, teach one. Um, I came up in an era where, you know, uh, that's what we did. We taught, we, we learned from what I call the plantation sages. And so, and so how we pay them back is we take what they gave us and we pass it on. You know, so that's why I'm here today. I'm simply here today to pass on what was given to me. Thank you, Mr. And I'm so thankful for Mo Debo because Mo Debo became a, a, a phone pal with Joey Knox and Robert Clayton when he comes. Joey always said, I want to give back some kind of way, like Jermaine said. And Joey is so excited about today because it gives him a chance to let go of some things that he really want to share. And Joey, break the ice for us, brother. Hello, how you doing? My name is Joey Owens. Born and raised in Joliet, Illinois. Uh, well, my story is, is simple. I've been through some things, seen a lot of things. Uh, so at this point in my life, I try to mentor to my younger bro brothers to prevent them going down the path and the mistakes that I've been through and had to learn the hard way. So, um, yeah, I just I just want to uplift my brothers, uh, prevent them from making the same mistakes I made. Um, like I said, I, I've been through a lot, I've seen a lot. I just like to share my testimony. But I, um, I'm grateful. I also, also want to say I'm grateful to share this platform with these brothers. Uh, his brother here, Motibo, he uh, mentored to me, and uh, we talk all the time. He's the inspiration in my life, and I'm, I'm just grateful to be here. And everybody get ready for the panel discussion. We want to take this to another level for all the schools, churches, and everywhere. A video of what we're going to do today. And I'm just so thankful. Yes, ma'am. Hello, everyone. This is Second Baptist Church, the oldest church, uh, African-American church in the area. We are celebrating going on 142 years. We have been on that location, uh, 156 South Joliet Street, over uh, 100 years. The church was built by former slaves who lived in Braidwood and worked in the mines and they built the foundation themselves. Um, they did not have a construction <laughs> crew, but they did it. And the original foundation is true limestone from the quarries in this area. Uh, hold up one of the books. Here are some of the information that we have today on our church. We also have 
Community Lifeline Ministries, which covers the seniors, our after school program, and our pantry on Thursdays at two o'clock, where we give our food boxes to those in need. So we do a lot at Second Baptist. Our gyms program for the children is from three to six, four days a week. We do homework help. We do extracurricular activities. We have a staff and we also give them a meal from the Northern Illinois Food Bank. Our staff is Luann Johnson, Executive Director. Janice Wood, one of the coordinators and one of the instructors. Edward Wood, also one of the coordinators and instructor and one of our other deacons. Deacon Charles King. So we thank you for the opportunity to be here with you today. We also have in our midst Sister Sylvia Johnson, who is one of our coordinators. And she, keeps, she is also our parent facilitator. She coordinates with the parents. And also she is our nutrition director. Excuse me, excuse me. Hi, my name is Sylvia Johnson. I'm over nutrition. I'm one of the instructors at the gyms class. And I'm um, also one of the, um, the coordinators. So if you're ever in the area, Please come to Second Baptist Church Sunday mornings at 10.30. Um, we have Sunday school at 9 in our multipurpose building. So we would love to see you at Second Baptist Church, 156 South Joliet Street. That's Second Baptist Church, 156 South Joliet Street, Joliet, Illinois. And the phone number is 815-726-3731, where the Reverend Larry V. Tyler is our illustrious pastor. Thank you. We hope to see you there.